This week, I flew back home to Seattle to hang out with some old RC buddies of mine in hopes of capturing some action. Oh! Let's start by looking at Misha's inability to act as a competent pilot and why pre-flights really don't matter. We got some very strong wing bolts. Okay. We'll see if they uh, hold through. This is experimental, straight from okay. uh, the US Army. First maneuver outside snap on the docket, right? Yep. All right. Oh, dude, no problem. What was that? Dude, what was that? <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's actually holding up pretty well. Do a nose gear test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Just planted it, dude. Yeah, dude. And she keeps going. <laughs> His experimental wing bolts designed by the U.S. Army obviously held up great. It was now time to try some from the USSR. Come on. Yes. Woo. Dude! Oh. Dude! Oh. What? Oh. Dude! <laughs> what just happened, dude? <laughs> then, it became Christmas for the kids of the field, as groves of children flocked to the crash site to snag electronics for their next build. Similar to Stewie running across the street with handbags to meet his favorite reality TV star. Back to demonstrating Misha's high IQ. He forgot a wing screw for his hobby king bolted gear. Dude, this is just not going to go well. <laughs> Pardon the pronunciation. We decided to pay tribute to our friend Jim Burke by attempting his one wing landing, but from a takeoff. You can probably guess how this went. I have one shot at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh! And I already uh, it. Uh, Perfect God. headwind. No way this could go wrong. Here we go! Punch it. <laughs> oh, oh, see, I told you, it would last like two seconds. That's what she said. <laughs> Good. Hey, made off the ground. Yeah. Next time we'll get a 3D Ken or Cody or Tim or somebody better on the stick. We're really not sure what this flight was, but enjoy. This is my uh, very nice uh, fun cub. I just built it the other day. As you can see, it's already damaged because I don't take care of my stuff. Here's the basic rundown on the fun cub. Uh, you take the battery. You, you, you plug it in and you just shove it, shove it up in there. Is your radio on? Uh, no, I always turn it on after the plane. Oh, okay. What is AMA? Yeah, Why is that? Standard procedure. Yeah, yeah. All right, do you want to demonstrate your uh, specialized elevator sort of? Oh, yeah. It gives me an alarm when I'm going down so I don't go down. Too much. It prevents you from hitting the people. I also have uh, uh, independent flaps. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we have a solid connection to the uh, receiver. Yeah, we're, I'm just gonna ignore that because uh, if you don't think about it, all your problems go away. It's true. This is called neglecting your aircrafts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 what just did the canopy? Oh, God. Quality fun cub landing right there. I think it's off now. Yeah, it turned off. There you go. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you gotta bounce it on. Oh, dude, 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 dude! Oh! <laughs> We're okay. I thought that you lost all RF there. No. Okay. I love the elevator servo, like. Jeez, dude! <laughs> oh, bro! That was a tail touch. Oh, something. Pretty close. Whoa. Whoa! Thankfully, the video paused so the plane didn't get hurt. Let's pretend the AMA didn't see any of that and move on to a safer topic, catapulting some 64mm jets into the air with Brian's catapulter. The hope is that one day we can get a full-blown aircraft carrier going with RC jets, so if you'd like to see that, be sure to let us know below. Grab this string here, okay? Yep. And this, when it launches, probably a good idea to put it someplace where it's going to feed real fast. Maybe like this, just dangle it. Servo actuated. Yep. Goes on there. Holds it under tension. With this pin. Huh? This guy right here should have some built-in tension. Maybe about that much. Okay. And then what do you wrap it off with? Oh, back around itself. About that much tension. Okay. So you see it has tension all the way through the entire stroke. Yep. It doesn't lose all its tension by the time it hits the end. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You just tie the sucker off, like that, on that on that uh, piece of dowel. 
I was just wondering what this is. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the good old days? <laughs> what the hell is that? Does it work? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh, my God. I think it's throttle. Okay. Or something that releases half throttle will release one. The rather throttle will release two. And I think it's either a retract switch or something here that does three. Oh, boy. <laughs> and here we are for take two with slight technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Initially, we had mild success, but this wouldn't stop us from trying again later. The first attempts with the catapulter were a bit disappointing, but all the error eventually led to success. This was such an awesome moment where we all got to celebrate the success of Brian's blood, sweat, and tears, and, well, don't worry, it only took about five seconds for the moment to go to foam bits. Thank God for Misha's ego, though. This time, it was on the jet pilot and not him. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Rest in pieces. More crashing later. For now, let's take a look at some super cinematic shots Misha got of the UMX Turbo Timber. UMX Timber with one hill around. Oh, dude! Oh, whoa! Whoa! Bro! Whoa! Oh! No! Bro! Oh. Are you Bro! Well, hopefully the shot was good, right? I don't know. <laughs> Hey, hey, if anybody needs a spare canopy, this, <laughs> this is not broken. Um, hit us up, we'll send it to you. Mint condition. Yep. Then, we took a brief break from crashing to help Daniel from RC Test Flight film his vacuum plane. Well, it probably won't fly, but it'll clean your carpet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dysons, right? Yeah, these are little handheld cordless Dyson motors. Yeah. They spin very fast and do a lot of power but they don't have a lot of uh, like volumetric airflow, so okay. they don't produce very much thrust. I think it's like around 200 grams of thrust each, maybe yeah. 220. Yeah. Um, so it's not optimal, but you know, it's, it'll probably uh, get some people to click on the video right. on YouTube, so. <laughs> throttle, it's full throttle or no throttle, and then once it's no throttle, it's permanently no throttle. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You can't raise the throttle. And it's, that's off. Yeah. No more throttle. So and now it it's stuck. Flips the switch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... We often see people leaving reviews on airplanes stating complaints that the plane is too light or floaty. You have it backwards, people. Lighter is better with bush planes. And here's proof. At one point in time, Zach posted a video on our chat, a Savage Bobber, that uh, flew indoors. And I was thinking, could I possibly build something that light, that flies that scale? So this is basically an attempt at doing that. But I realized the one that flies inside the gym is so light and so delicate that it's probably not suited for outdoor use. So this one's a compromise between what I saw in the video on, in the way of an indoor flyer and uh, something that can be used outside. Oh my gosh. And it weighs out at 26 ounces and Zach's gonna test it out and see what he thinks. The critic of how it flies will be Zach's. Well, Brian, I genuinely think that of all the mudgies I've flown, this is by far the winner of the ultimate stole machine you've ever built. For those curious, 
the wing loading comes out to about 5.7 ounces a square foot. That's 3 ounces lighter per square foot than the OG Fun Cub, and 10 ounces lighter per square foot than a Timber Evo, both of which are essentially the same size airplane as this new Mudgy. Keep them light, Brian. If you believe 5G caused most of the crashes in this video, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Or, if you think Misha should get a free lifetime membership to the AMA, maybe even hit subscribe. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll catch you next week with a new upload.